What's up guys, it's Eric from b -Side. Today we have here a Lexus ES. We're gonna be doing another CarPlay Android Auto retrofit installation video and also demonstration video. This time it's gonna be very, very detailed and we're gonna show you how to connect the new harness. We eliminated one of the connectors that goes to the top screen to make the installation easier. So we'll go ahead and show you that because we've been getting some emails and some inquiries that they are missing a connector, which is not true. We just update the harness to make it easier for it to install. So let's go ahead and get inside and get started. All right, guys, so before we start, let me go over some of the tools that we're gonna be using. So you wanna get a thick blanket. This is an old sweater that we're using. This is um, going to be placed over here and we pull the radio out to protect the interior. We also have a 10 millimeter socket. You could use a wrench. We are using a power tool, doesn't matter, as long as you could remove 10 millimeter bolts with it. We are also going to be using a Phillips screwdriver. Um, the one with the magnetic tip will help because when you remove the Phillips screws around the screen, you can potentially drop them. So having a magnetic tip helps. And we're going to use some panel removal tools. We're going to also hold on to a flathead screwdriver to help remove some of the clips from the back. And you could use some masking tape and also some electric tape and some zip ties with some little side cutters and some foam tape and some double-sided tape will help as well actually for this vehicle i don't i don't think you need double-sided tape but we might want to be using some foam tape all right let's go ahead and get started so while we are in the vehicle first thing we're going to do we're going to remove the shift knob push down the shift boot turn counterclockwise let's keep turning and we're gonna place this in a safe location where you won't scratch it. Next, we're going to remove this panel piece here. I remove it, grab a little panel removal tool. I'm gonna slide it in here between the vent and then this piece right under it, okay? Just gonna push it out. And it's just being held by a clip. So once you go get your finger behind it, just go ahead and just pull it towards you. Just go slowly and just move your way to the left. All right, there we go. And then next, we are going to remove this piece here. Okay, just go ahead and place your hand in the vent, just pull it towards you. All right, I remove it, grab a little panel removal tool. You could use the assistance of a panel removal tool if you wish. All right, there we go. Okay, there is one connector behind it for the clock. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. Push down the release tab and push the connector out. Okay, all right. And whenever you're working with connectors, you always wanna push down the release tab and pull on the connector, okay? Don't pull on the wires because you don't wanna accidentally end up pulling the wires out of the connector, which will be bad. All right, now we're gonna remove this. This one's gonna require a panel removal tool that's a little bit bigger, something like this. Okay, and then we're gonna just stick it in here and just pry it out. All right, there it is. Next, there's four 10 millimeter bolts. We're gonna remove those four using a power tool, 10 millimeter socket with a wrench. And to remove it, you're gonna be turning it counterclockwise. And just to make sure I don't lose these bolts, I'm gonna go ahead and place them inside the cup holder. All right, okay, this is ready to come out, but before we do, let's go ahead and work on the top. So there's gonna be two clips up here. Uh, we're gonna remove it by using a little, you could either use a panel removal tool or you could use a flathead screwdriver. But when you're using a flathead screwdriver for this, you're gonna need something that's really short because there's not that much room to work here. So here it is, I'm gonna use something like this. I'm gonna go down here and release the clips. When you're doing this, be careful not to scratch your interior, okay? All right, there it is. Ready? Okay. All right, okay, after we move that, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna grab it from up here, push it down and pull it out, okay? So, if you have a hard time placing your finger in here, you could place a panel removal tool as well. That and just pull it out straight. There are gonna be two Phillips screws we're gonna remove. This one and this one. And these are the ones that you wanna be very careful with. 
that you don't end up like dropping it down there because if you do drop it, you will lose it. You're gonna have a hard time finding it. Just don't drop these screws. So you don't have to visit your local dealership to find it. Doesn't cost much, but it's just out of your way to do so. All right, there it is. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. Stay, place your finger behind here, push towards you. Okay, there it is. All right, go ahead and pull firmly. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the connectors behind here. Okay, and we're gonna use that flathead screwdriver to push out this clip from below. And then there's one connector back here. Right. And we're gonna carefully bring this out. Next, let's go ahead and pull the radio out. Just make sure you protect this area. There's sharp brackets behind the radio. That will scratch your interior if you don't protect it. Okay, so we got this out. Next, we're gonna work in the glove box area. We're gonna drop down the glove box. Okay, to remove the glove box, we are first gonna remove this under tray here. Okay, you could use a panel removal tool or you could just place your hand in one of the openings. Just pull it down. Let's actually use a panel removal tool. Uh, all right, there it is. Go ahead and remove or unplug this connector for the footwell lights. Now we will be exposed with two 10 millimeter bolts. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those by using your 10 millimeter socket with the wrench or a power tool and we're gonna turn it counterclockwise. All right. Okay, I think there's gonna be another one down here. So let's go ahead and remove this panel piece here as well. Okay, yep, there it is, it's down there. Don't necessarily have to remove them, just move it aside. And we're gonna use our socket with an extension to remove that one. Okay, let's go ahead and just, just remove the, um, the side um, panel here, okay? The door sill area. So just place your hand here and just move it up. There it is. Okay, so you remove this. Let's go ahead and remove this as well. There's a little screw down here that I'm unscrewing with my left hand. Um, it's like a plastic screw. Let me show you how it, how it looks. Just go over there, you'll feel it. It's like this. Just place your hand, just keep turning it to the right, I mean to the left, counterclockwise, and it'll eventually come off. All right, and then once that's out, you can just pull this out. Okay. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and remove both of this as well. So now we can remove this. And then now we can remove this airbag assembly. All right, let's let it sit right here. Make sure while all this is out, never close your door. Or you're going to scratch up your door. You're gonna mess it up with this bracket here, okay? So make sure your door never gets closed while you're doing this, this part of the install. All right, so once you remove this, there's two Phillips screws we're gonna remove, one, two, and there's also three on the top that we're gonna remove, okay? So I'll go ahead and remove them. We got one here. And then we got one to the left. And we're gonna open the glove box. And we got Gonna, there's a little panel here we're going to remove with the panel removal tool. Okay, and that is going to expose three Phillips screws. And then get a hold of here and then just go ahead and wiggle the glove box out like so. Okay. And then the back here, you're gonna see three connectors, okay? I'm gonna remove all of them. And once again, press down the release tab and pull on the connector. And when you reinstall your car, make sure all this is connected, like reconnected. Especially this one. If you don't, you're gonna get an error on your cluster, okay? 
this one right here is going to give you an error if you don't reconnect it. I think some sort of airbag error. And let's go ahead and start connecting the harness. Okay, here's a new harness. These CAN wires, jumpers, are already going to be pre-configured, um, so don't mess with it. And if you have the ES, you should, the red GS wire should be connected to the white and the orange CAN wires. And the RX brown wire should be connected to each other. Okay, so it's, everything's gonna be pre-configured, but just in case, if you wanna double check, that's how it should be. Okay, so we're gonna make both of the connections behind the radio right now, okay? So we're gonna connect the big one, and we're also going to connect our auxiliary harness right here. All right, so the big one's over here. Um, First, we're gonna release this. So I push down, use like a, some sort of, something with a flat, um, long edge, push down on the release tab. It'll release the connector. And then go ahead and remove. And we are going to daisy chain our connector. So our female side will connect to this, the male side of the car. And then the male side of ours will connect to the radio. everything will snap in place nicely. Okay, now we're gonna connect our auxiliary audio cable. So this is the connector you're gonna be working with right here. Gonna unplug, and we're gonna plug it to our harness. Sometimes just plugging it straight, it won't, it might, if, it's, if you have a difficult time going in, just go ahead and um, angle it a little bit and push it in. If you still have a difficult time, push it in hard and see what pin potentially bent and you could try unbending it with a little flathead screwdriver. Okay, so, all right, there it is. It's just, everything should click nicely. All right. We got this main connector here that connects to our interface. We also have this power cable, and we also have the microphone and the audio. And all this is going to be routed down here to the glove box area. Before the power cable came from the top, now we got rid of that connector and we're taking the power from the radio to make it easier for the install and less wire routing. So we're gonna go back here and just push our hand all the way back. Okay, we're gonna route it from this open area. Don't go from here or here, just go all the way from back here. It has the biggest opening space and you'll have an easier time routing your cables. Okay, when you're pushing this over here to the right, if you feel like your wire is getting caught on something, don't just force it and pull it because you will rip your wire. So just kind of assess and see what's going on and resolve the issue at the issue point, okay? Instead of just forcing it, just pulling it because you will probably break it so or damage the cable. So just be careful with that. Okay, so here it is. Got our cable in over here to the right side. And now we are going to route our two GVIF cables, these two. These are going to be connected behind the screen and we're gonna route it to this area. So these two blue parts is what you want to route behind the screen. And we're gonna go from back here, down here, and then there's gonna be an opening. There's plenty of room. You won't have difficult time routing it up here. So here it is, up here. Okay, we're gonna connect our female connector to the male connector from the vehicle, and the male connector from our harness is gonna connect to the screen. All right, so while we have all this up here, let's go ahead and reconnect the screen right now. And when you're reconnecting it, don't forget, there's the GVIF cable, there's this connector, and there's also a connector on the side here, okay? So there's gonna be three. Don't forget this one here. All right, and before we put this back, um, let me go ahead and I'm gonna just wrap this connector with some foam tape. So we had a request of doing this from someone very important, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do it for this vehicle. Um, you don't have to do it, but if you have the resources to, you could go ahead and do so. All right, let's go ahead and connect this. All right, here we go. We got the GVIF connector there. We got this part and then don't forget this right here, okay? And we're gonna push this back in to its original location. So let me push this back first. Okay, all right, I'm gonna push this back. If you wanna be extra careful, you can mask this 
area off or you could place a towel here just so you don't risk touching this area. Okay, so I'm gonna push this back in. I won't screw it on yet until I do my final test. All right, so we're back here in this glove box area again with all our harness and cables. And now let's grab our module and our interface. Okay, we also have our antenna and also our HDMI and our USB. So dip switch configuration is gonna be very specific to this vehicle. Everything's gonna be preset already for you and you're also gonna have a label here that tells you what the dip switch configuration should be just in case you knock it or change it. Just in case you accidentally change it while you're installing the, the device. So let me go ahead and set it up. This one's not set yet. Okay, so for this, it's a 2017 Lexus ES, so the configuration should be 1, 5, 6, 7, should be on the on position, rest is off. Once again, it's going to be very specific to your vehicle. If you have the older ES, it's going to be different as well. So everything's going to be pre-configured, but if you want to double check, just read the tag on here, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and connect these. All right, the first connection we're going to make is these GVIF cables. One is labeled out. The one that's labeled out is going to be connected to the inner side. Okay, the one that's labeled GVIF in, in is going to be connected on the outer edge. And then we have the HDMI cable that we're going to connect to on this side. And then we have our main harness connector that we are going to connect here. All right. Okay, and then we are done with all the connections on this metal dip switch box. Next, we're gonna work on our CarPlay module. So we got the audio connected to line out, okay? All the way up in the corner. Do not connect to external speaker. You connect to external speaker, you're gonna get distorted sound. And this microphone in, we're gonna connect it here, right next to the USB, which is labeled mic in. And then the HDMI cable here, we're gonna connect this to HDMI. So we have an HDMI cable connecting these two boxes together. And we also have here the power cable. We're going to connect the power cable to this module here. All right, and we got just two more. We got an antenna. This is for your wireless signal, for wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. And then we also have the USB extension cable. This one, we're gonna route it to under the radio side. But for now, let's just go ahead and plug it in. Just so I could test for operation. All right, so we have everything connected by this time. If you disconnect the negative terminal on the car battery, this is time to reconnect it and then we're gonna do our test before we tidy everything up, okay? All right, so we're not gonna turn on the engine. We, we might get some error message on the screen um, just to let you know because everything is not connected, but don't worry, this is just for the CarPlay confirmation just to test it out to make sure everything's working. In the beginning, when you first turn it on, the system will load, so just give it a few, give it like a minute or two. All right, so everything is connected. Factory infotainment system is loaded. Just for this test purposes, the purpose, I'm gonna go ahead and just test it using the wire connection. So you wanna first select the media button and select auxiliary. All right, you could select doing this or you could press the media button a few times. Okay, here it is. All right, I can already hear the sound. All right, and then make sure your sound EQ is all centered. Okay, I'm also gonna check to make sure my left and right speakers are working properly. Okay, that's working. All right, that's working. It's good. All right, now we're gonna press and hold the home button. Screen will switch. Here it is, it's working. Let me check my Siri by pressing map. What is the weather? 
It is currently cloudy. Terrific. My microphone's working. Let me go test the track up and down. Track up and down is working. Volume up. And volume down. It's working. Back button's working. Sweet. Everything is working. All right. Let me go ahead and turn this off. And let me go ahead and tidy up the cables and mount my boxes. And also finish routing my cables. One of the first things we're going to do is um, let's go ahead and, and route my USB. Okay. So we're going to route this. We're going to go in through the back of the glove box. And we're going to loop back in behind the radio. And then from the radio, we're going to go to the left side of the radio. And from the left side of the radio, we are going to just make it show up here. Okay. All right. Okay. So let me go ahead and push my radio back in. Okay. When you're pushing the radio back in, just make sure you don't lose your USB plug here. Okay. Just keep it and then just make sure you don't pinch it. You're going to move this a little bit off to the side of the radio mounting bracket. All right, I'm just gonna let it hang out here for now, like so, okay? All right, so while we do this, let's go ahead and organize this cables. So let's go ahead and route our antenna. We're gonna route our antenna around here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and just move this like so, okay? And I'm just gonna tuck it in back here. If you want, you could undo the double-sided tape and push it up here, but it's not really necessary as there's enough tension between the center console and the side panel that it will stay in there. It won't move. It's not going anywhere. So if you look at the instructions, it might, it might tell you to bring it up here, wrap it with some foam tape, and it'll be very, very secure. At the same time, you can also mount it under the AC fan, which we're gonna do now. And then just place the double-sided tape. So, let's so go ahead and loop this down here. All right, it's on there pretty good. Um, just when you're there, just try to mount it as flat as possible. Um, you do have to angle a certain way to do so. I'll do a close-up later to show you how it's mounted. Alright, so let me go ahead and reconnect the connectors for my module again. Alright, so for this one, we have everything pre reconnected. We're going to go ahead and wrap it with some foam tape. Um, there's some opening vents here. Make sure you don't block it. So we're just going to do it up here and down here. Okay. All right guys, so this is how we routed it. So we got the two GVIF cables from coming up top and we got all these other cables coming from the back side of the radio. We went ahead and zip tied it here. You could do it two ways. You could mount the um, dip switch box up here, sideways here with using the foam tape, it'll stay put. Or you can double side tape it down here below, which we did. Try to get you some angle. Okay, there it is right there. It's flat against the AC fan on the bottom. All right, okay, it's flat against it. All right, and then we got the, and we went ahead and we organized the wires behind this, um, goes across. We zip tied it here with this factory connector or with this factory um, wires. Uh, we, and then we also organized it, come back up, and then we mounted the CarPlay Android Auto module up here and that also has a foam tape around it so it'll stay put it's not so so it's not going anywhere and we have the hdmi cable coming from the back side okay and then and then connecting to our dip switch box all right so that's how you route the wires and organize the two boxes so let me go ahead and reverse order everything we just did and then that will conclude the installation all right, guys, one thing I want to note, when you're putting this back in here, this USB, we're going to go ahead and pinch it down here. There's enough slack on this plastic piece here that 
it'll fit in there perfectly. And of course, before we do that, let's go ahead and put in these two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, guys, well, we just went ahead and finished installing our B-Sonic S-Connect CarPlay Android Auto Retrofit Kit for this Lexus ES. This model specifically is a 2017, but our kit is compatible from 2013 all the way to 2018. Um, let me show you how it works. This is our main menu, factory menu. Everything works normally. You know, you don't have any lost functions or anything. Everything works as usual. Um, before we get into CarPlay mode, you want to make sure you're in a auxiliary. So you could press the media button until you reach auxiliary or you could go to source and then you could select auxiliary. So we're going to go ahead and just reorder this to our first page so that this customer has a easier way of accessing the auxiliary menu. All right. So once again, we're in auxiliary. So you're going to press and hold the home button. That's going to take you into this CarPlay screen. So right now, all three of these are grayed out um, and the only selection we could do is settings. This means that nothing is connected to this device. And we're gonna do our first initial wireless connection. Um, this kit also could do wired as well if you like, but we're gonna go ahead and do the wireless. So to do that, we'll go to settings. We wanna make sure both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is turned on. And then we want to go to general. We want to go to CarPlay. And then we're going to go ahead and select MV17W-BT. And it's going to ask you if you want a Bluetooth pairing and then allow contacts, go ahead and allow both. And go ahead and give it about five to 10 seconds and it will launch. There's also two other settings that we want to check. So it's a CarPlay screen. Uh, before we get into the CarPlay, you want to we want to set it up on the iPhone so that all the calls will be routed to the car's Bluetooth while the music is routed to the CarPlay Bluetooth. So in order to do that, we'll go to settings, go to your Bluetooth, and then in here, um, look for your Lexus ES. If it says car multimedia or car car access, accessory, you want to change it to, um, to the Lexus ES. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This phone right now is not connected to this car's Bluetooth. So, but let me go ahead and do our first initial connection here. So I'll go to setup, I'll go to Bluetooth. Um, let me go ahead and add. Okay. I believe this is it. It says hands free. Yep. That's the number. I'm not going to allow my contacts. It's just my, it's not my phone. So I have it connected here. And if you check here, um, it says Lexus ES. So that's how we want it to. We want it to say Lexus EX. If it doesn't, select the I, pick here, and change the name to Lexus ES. You don't want it to say car multimeter or car accessory. You don't want the name car in here or else the cars won't get routed properly. And once you have that, um, you want to go to accessibility. You want to go to touch and go all the way down to call audio routing. You want to change the Bluetooth headset from automatic, okay? Uh, okay, once we have all those done we, let's go back to your carplay screen it's your carplay screen and if you notice um, by pressing and holding the home button it takes you back to your factory screen okay why in the carplay screen all your functions will work like your backup camera will work normally and you don't end up losing any of your functions all right so we're here let's listen to a music okay there's our music our track up track down works our volume up and our volume down also works as well. You just don't see the change on the screen. Okay, and then if you want to summon Siri, you could press menu. What is the weather? It has currently partly okay. cloudy. And then the and back button the works as a back button. All right, and then on top of that, you can also track up and track down with these controls as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this. And to navigate through the screen, you could push down, you could slide around like so, change the, um, the pages. You could also go to the, the map application and you can drag around. And all the normal functionality of CarPlay works, like go here, search, um, gas stations. Okay, I'll take you to the nearest gas station. Go, go. Starting route to 76. Okay, and route. 
All right, so this is CarPlay. Let me go ahead and disconnect from this, and I'm gonna show you how the Android Auto works. All right, to disconnect, you want to turn off both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And then we'll go to our Android device, and we're gonna go to settings, go to connections, and we're gonna go to Bluetooth, and we're gonna look for our MV17W, which should show. There it is. Okay, go ahead and say yes to pairing. Give it a few seconds and it will launch automatically. So once your phone is connected to the car, to the CarPlay or Android Auto wirelessly, every time you turn on your car, it will connect automatically. So you don't have to go through all these steps you did. You do, um, but you do have to press and hold the home button to switch the screen over to either the CarPlay or Android Auto screen. All right, and everything works just like how the CarPlay works, dragging, and you can also track up and down works. This is the only music in this album, so it's not showing the track up and down, but it does go back. Okay, and then the volume up and down also works as well. Back button works as back. And menu item, menu button works as Google Assistant. What is the weather? All right, there it is. Right now? All right, terrific. And once again, if you want to disconnect from here, whoop, wrong one. You want to turn off your Bluetooth and you want to turn off your Wi-Fi, which will disconnect your phone. All right, guys, well, that concludes our installation and demonstration video on this Lexus ES. Hope you enjoyed it. And this video is the most updated one with our most updated kit. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or you can email us at info at bsonicusa.com. If you haven't yet, help our channel by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys on the next video.